All right, now we want to take this application a little bit further. So we want to add this behavior such that when we move the slider, the label is updated to show the current value of the slider. To implement this, we need to handle the value change event of the slider. And then in our event handler, we can get the current value and then set the label. So pretty basic. In the first section, you saw an example of handling the click event of a button in Xamarin Forms. So the technique we're going to use here is exactly the same. For the slider, we handle the value changed event and set this to the name of a method in our code behind. So enter, enter. Now I'm going to move this down. Okay, inside our event handler, we can use this E argument passed to this method to get the new value of the slider. But we need a reference to the label so we can set its text. How do we do it? Well, back in our XAML, I'm going to give this label a name or an ID. So we use one of the attributes defined in Microsoft namespace. So x colon name. This x is a prefix which is declared in the XML namespace declaration for Microsoft namespace. So this name attribute belongs to the standard XAML that Microsoft introduced in 2009. And it's applicable in other frameworks that use XAML, like Silverlight or Windows Presentation Foundation or Xamarin Forms. Now we set this name to an identifier, like label. Now when I save this file and go back to the code behind, I can type label dot, and here we have access to our label. So we can set the text property. I'm going to use string dot format value is, provide an argument here, and then set it to e dot new value. Now the value we get here is a floating point number between zero to one. And there are a lot of digits after decimal point. So I would like to format this value to a fixed point with two digits after the decimal point. So let's run the application. Okay, now if I move the slider, look, the value is updated. And this is a pattern that you see in a lot of real world applications, but the value may be displayed as percentage. Now there is just one tiny problem with this application. Let me restart it. The label is displaying hello world instead of the current value of the slider. To fix this, in the constructor, after the call to initialize component, we can explicitly set the value of the slider. So again, we need a reference to this slider object. So back in our XAML file, we use xName attribute and give it an identifier, slider. Save. Now back in the code behind, we can type slider.value we can set it to 0 or 0 0.5, whatever. Let's run the application again. Okay, that's much better. Now let me give you a bit more insight about this xName attribute. So under the object folder, debug, open up hello world.greetpage.xaml.g.cs. Look, we have two private fields here. One is a label, the other is a slider. And in initialize component method, after the call to load from XAML, these private fields are initialized. So we have this method find by name, which is inherited from content page, the base class of our greet page. And we give this method an argument which specifies the name or the identifier for our widget. With this, after initialize component, we can access this private field, like in this case, the slider. Just remember, if you put this line before initialize component, you're gonna get a null reference exception because that private field is not initialized at that point. So in this lecture, you learn how to access elements in code behind using xName attribute. Now, even though our application is fully functioning, but there is a simpler and cleaner way to implement the exact same functionality, and that's called data binding, which I'm going to show you in the next lecture.